Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dave Skosik with PR Delaware. We're here on location today at uh, Wesley College in Dover. We have an exciting program for you, tell you things you didn't know about Wesley College. We'll speak with the president, Bob Clark, speak with the head of nursing, Dr. Bob Contino, and also speak with somebody who you know very well, if you any, know anything about sports, that's uh, the athletic director, Mike Drass. Stick around, we have a wonderful show for you. Hi, Dave Skosik, welcome back to PR Delaware. This program, we are focusing on uh, Wesley College. We're beginning with our interview with uh, somebody who's very well known, very well loved in this area. He's been at uh, Wesley College for 26 years, athletic director, Mike Drass. Mike, welcome. Hey, Dave. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you too. So uh, we came down today because your picture's always in the paper because you're a winner. Your, your team does a great job. Uh, and I know that uh, you came here in 1989 as a, as a football coach. Four years later, you were made head football coach. Not long after that, you were made uh, athletic director. Uh, tell me about that. Where did you initially come from before you came to Wesley? Well, I was at Mansfield University, and I was a, an assistant coach at, at Mansfield and wanted to get into coaching profession on a full-time basis. I had worked a bunch of odd jobs while I was coaching, and uh, I just happened to come across an ad where Wesley was looking for an assistant coach for four thousand dollars to live in a dorm, and I thought, "Hey, that sounds like a great—that's <laughs> a great path for me." And uh, came here in '89 and just had a great time. I mean, you know, working with uh, Tim Keating, who was the head coach at the time, and Roy O'Neill and Chip Knapp, and uh, we set a blast, and we just kind of built the program from there. And uh, Roy left to take a job at Shippensburg. I became a full-time coach here, and, and then Tim left to take the job at McDaniel, and I became the head coach. And uh, and we've never looked back. I know you're a very humble guy, and I. But what do you see as the reason for your success? Well, I think uh, you know we have a, a bunch of great coaches on the football staff who really devote uh, more than just um, time on the field. You know, time off the field, working with our kids. You know, and it's a development over the four-year process. You know, these kids come in; they're 18 years old, and they're young men. A lot of them are kind of immature, and. I remember myself when I was that age, I was very immature. And uh, we work with our kids, you know, not, you know, as they mature into a young man, you know, and as they make progress, you know, toward their degree. That's a good point, too, in terms of working with the kids. I'm thinking about the academic aspect of it. I know you're very focused on that. Well, we are. I mean, if, if our kids aren't in school and graduating, then, you know, there's no use for us being here. And I think as an athletic department, you know, we're very proud of all of our coaches. Um, right now, over 40% of all of our student athletes have over a 3.2 GPA, 3 .2. you know, and that's a cumulative GPA. So, you know, we're real proud of that, you know, and it's something that we've worked hard to get to. You know, in our conference, it's a big deal, you know, to make the academic all conference team. And uh, we hit that 40% mark this year, and, and we, you know, we've been striving for that for a number of years. So we're real proud of that. How do you see sports and the whole sports program? program tying with the mission of Wesley College? Well, when I see athletics as it's tied to Wesley College, you know, we're here to serve the student, you know, and I think that's the, the main point that all of our coaches embrace. You know, our job is to make sure that we're focused on our kids making progress. Progress academically, progress socially, and progress athletically. If, if that's our mission, then our kids are going to be successful. So, uh, in terms of your athletes, how well do they do in, in engagement in classes, engagement in community activities, things like that? Well, we're excited this week, you know, from a community activity standpoint, it's Read Across America, so we'll have our, our football, uh, women's softball, and women's lacrosse team out in, in, in the elementary schools reading with the kids and just spending time in the community with, with uh, you know, teachers and, and, uh, and Fairview and a couple other elementary schools, uh, and that's a great experience for them. You know, and academically, we're proud of the success that our kids are having, and you know our goal is for them all to graduate. And that's why we're here. So, uh, with the uh, in terms of the travel, now you're traveling to greater distances and still you know going out there and uh, and and winning. And uh, does your team realize that they have a wonderful history? I read something in the in the paper the other day that you try to underscore what all of these victories mean to the school and to them. Sure, and, and it's been a you know it's been an interesting transition for us. You know we were an independent. Um, from 2011 until this season, and we, you know, had team will travel. We went, we've been to Texas, California, 
uh, you, you name it, Maine, everywhere across this country, Louisiana, the, the worst trip in the world. Try and, try and get from Philadelphia to uh, Pineville, Louisiana without it taking you know, two full days to get there. Oh, um, but it, it, it's been a great experience for our kids. And uh, now that we've transitioned into the uh, New Jersey Athletic Conference uh, in football, um, it's, it's great for uh, not just our kids, but for our parents, too. They get a chance to see their kids play. So I understand there was a big number that came up before this number of career wins for you. Well, you know, 200, uh, 200. wins, and that's, uh, yeah, I, you know, I get embarrassed by, you know, people talking about that because it's football. You know, it's, it's, it's 11 guys all working together to make something special on the field at one time. Uh, you know, Coach Knapp, uh, our, my associate head coach, you know, he has a great saying, you know, and says there's a lot of work that goes into a win. And it's not a lot of work by one person. You know, it's a lot of work by a team. And uh, uh, a lot of people went into those 200 wins. And, uh, you know, any credit for that, I want to share. Well, certainly uh, the team, or the, I should say the field that they play on and practice on has been upgraded. I understand there's some new turf that was recently laid. And, and that was great for us. I mean, back in 2004, nobody had field turf. I mean, Wesley College was the first team to get field turf. Uh, I wouldn't say on the East Coast, but within this area. And we were good neighbors. I mean, everybody was on it. We always had the AA championships on it. And mm -hmm. um, within four years, everybody had field turf. And, and uh, within 10 years, our turf had to be replaced. And, and uh, that's the nature of the beast in that game. And, and uh, you know, this summer we brought it in. And, you know, luckily, uh, I was just talking to somebody, our new president, President Clark, about this last night at a soccer game. When they took the field up, you know the guys that were working on it said this is going to be a this is going to be a great field because the undercarriage was was still in pristine condition, and uh, it really does look nice right now. So did they name part of that after you? I'm yeah. Gonna ask you that. Well, the, <laughs> yeah, the field is named after me, and uh, uh, you know I, that's a very uh, humbling and it's an unbelievable honor. Um, there's a lot of coaches that coach on that field, and a lot of kids that play on that field. Um, that's. Uh, You've got, uh, in addition to football, you've got 19 sports here, right? Yeah, 18. 18 we have, we, you know, we have 18 NCAA sports, and you know, on that field we have you know, football and men's and women's soccer, field hockey, men's and women's lacrosse. Uh, you know, all of our sports are, are doing well. We're playing in the Capital Athletic Conference for all sports except football, which is in the New Jersey Athletic Conference. So uh, we're real excited about the athletic department and, and our coaches and how hard we're working and the success our kids are having. Well, you're certainly getting a lot of fantastic visibility uh, for the uh, for the institution, and I, I, I think that uh, again you stand out as far as uh, academics, as far as athletics, as far as working with the other coaches. Uh, uh, anything else that you would like to add? Well, I better I got to clarify something. We work real hard to make sure our kids are doing a good job in the classroom. I probably wasn't the model that they wanted to follow as a student. I mean, I passed my classes, but. Uh, you know, I, 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 was, I wasn't a dean's list guy there. <laughs> well, you're always smiling. Maybe that's uh, why they equate with you. You know, you understand them, and they and they understand you. And they, obviously, they do what you tell them to do because they're so successful. Well, I think we do have some great kids who do follow direction. That's a focus and uh, and execution are the two things that are going to help the team win. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my guest today has been Mike Drass, the athletic director here at uh, Wesley College. Thanks so much for being with me today. It's good to see you again, old Dave. Time. It's great to see you. Hello again, Dave Skosik. I'm at the President's Office at Wesley College. I'd like to introduce uh, Bob Clark, the new President of Wesley College. He prefers to be called Bob. He's been here about three months. Welcome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. And I know you've got a very distinguished career in the Navy. Tell us about that. I do. I've I had the privilege of serving our country for the last 32 years in the United States Navy uh, in the submarine force. Uh, commanded one of our subs. I was a Commodore of uh, one of our submarine squadrons and my uh, one of my last major shore assignments I was the 84th Commandant of Midshipman at the United States Naval Academy. So having the privilege of serving our nation and as I look to transition into another um, field where I could continue to serve, coming to an institution of higher learning seemed the natural progression. And uh, I am just absolutely thrilled uh, to be here at Wesley College and, and call Delaware home. So and I, I particularly focus on the fact that you were a submariner, 
And right. uh, there are very few uh, people that I know who actually served in submarines. So just for the heck of it, tell us a little bit about that service there. Uh, well, really, at the end of the day, it's, it's about people. Uh, the service in the submarine force is, is just that, is service. And uh, I, uh, I had the privilege of serving uh, incredible sailors. Uh, and to me, at the end of the day, it wasn't the technology, it wasn't the missions, uh, it was the people. And that's one of the things that drew me here to Wesley College and the Dover and Greater Delaware community is as I looked at a place where I felt I could make a difference, where I would have the privilege of service, where I could interact with community and change lives, the more I learned about Wesley, or what I like to call the Wesley College family, the more drawn in I became. And, uh, and so that's what, what brings us here together. And I know you're a former Navy guy yourself, so we went from wearing khakis to now uh, suits and ties, but it, it's, it's not what we wear, it's not the titles that we have, uh, it's not uh, the hardware that we interact with. It's, it's the people, it's the human soul, and it's providing those opportunities uh, for our future. And That's what I was getting at, the, the leadership aspect of, mm -hmm. of a role sure. like, uh, like you have is not really dissimilar to what you did uh, in the military. Correct, it, it, it's about facilitation, it's about education, it's about empowerment, and it's about inspiration. Uh, I think there's a tendency for people to look at, at leadership and try to define it by titles or positions or, or clothing items, but to me, uh, leadership is much more. It's the ability to change lives, to influence lives, to, to allow people the opportunity to grow and realize things that they were never capable of doing alone, but together united, uh, the sky's the limit. And whether that's in uh, the military or higher education, to me at the end of the day, it's always about service and it's about the future. And I know that uh, you had mentioned that's why you came to Wesley, but what got you interested in wanting to be a college president to begin with? Well, well as I mentioned, uh, for me, the transition from serving a nation to serving a community was, okay. was almost, uh, you know, I hate to use the vernacular, but a, but a no-brainer. And then during my time at the Naval Academy, when, when really the, those, those two worlds mix, where I just came from my uh, uh, Commodore posting, uh, Submarine Squadron 4, to the 84th Commandant of Midshipmen, and I had the interaction with not only those young men and women, those, those students, our future, but, but getting to work with incredible professors, faculty, staff, mm -hmm. and administrators. And then as I became aware of the Wesley College family and really got to meet them, the more involved and the more people I met, the more drawn in I got. Uh, the passion here at Wesley and our staff and our faculty and our coaches and our administrators is unmatched. And, and the potential that we have here and the opportunities that we have here for our young men and women is, is, is truly remarkable. And, uh, and it drew me to be part of, of this family. And I'm, as I said, my wife Ruth Ann and I are, are thrilled to call Wesley College, our family, and called Delaware our home. And I know you've been involved in the community as, as, as part of your, uh, your presidential duties, but also uh, I know that you enjoy doing it in the short time that, I have, that, that I've known you. In a small college, you spend a lot of time interacting with students. How mm -hmm. has that experience been? I think it's, it's been fantastic. It's, uh, it allows uh, several things, and you hit on something, that, that small college. Uh, uh, I wanted that experience. I wanted to come to a place, and very similar in, in my previous life, where, where I felt I could have a direct impact. Um, and that doesn't mean a direct impact in terms of direction in its purest sense, but in terms of mentorship and providing uh, opportunities uh, and support for my educators and staff to, to really take advantage of the great things they do. But it's always great that, to be in a place where you know the student's name, right. uh, where they know uh, who you are. Uh, and I like to get out and about. I don't believe in sitting in this office. In fact, our interview will probably be more time than I spend in here than most because it's amazing what you can learn when you're out just listening and, and watching. So, for example, when our students moved in, um, my staff, who are just incredible, they did what I would call uh, the framework of check-in. They were introducing people to their residence halls. They were bringing people to academia. They looked great, and they were a phenomenal face for the institution. And speaking uh, of, I don't want to cut you short. Sure. I want to make sure we, that we get sure. to uh, You had used the term Wesley's worth right. in terms of students. And tell, right. tell us about that. And I'll mention that. I just Let me finish up that one thought. So, okay. so I put on a pair of shorts and a T-shirt, and I moved the families in. 
And I was a maintenance man, I was a coach, I was a father, but I learned a lot. <laughs> Wesley Worth, what I mean by that, and, it, and this, is, this is the dichotomy of, yes, we are a small Methodist-affiliated uh, private college. In fact, recently Raptor Incorporated named us as that hidden gem uh, in Delaware. Uh, but like any gem, once you take a really close look at it, we're not so hidden. If you look at the number of folks that we bring here, the opportunities provide, and then what they do with it, we have more people that impact the economy of Delaware, the culture of Delaware, and our way of life proportionally than most. We have state senators. I know you know Colin Benini. Uh, we have a famous photographer, Kevin Fleming. Mm -hmm. Right down the road at Merrill Lynch, the vice president, she's a Wesley grad, a former um, uh, field hockey player. When I was a young man getting recruited for football, I remember if you talked about Delaware, everybody talked about Tubby Raymond and the mm -hmm. wing tee. You go around Delaware right now, everybody runs the spread offense. Why? Mike Drass. A lot of the coaches, Mike Drass uh, mentored and trained. You meet some of the educators in the state. They went to Wesley. So I would just pose this question. Yes, we're a hidden gem. Yes, we are a small Methodist affiliated uh, college. But are we? Look at the number that come and then more importantly, get a chance to meet and interact with those who stay. Because they're our culture, they're our economy, there are leaders in this state and in this region. And I know you've got a lot of programs. In, in fact, I understand there's a new master's program in uh, occupational therapy. Absolutely right. And, and this goes to that partnership with the community. I, I mean, in that Wesley College family, it is, uh, yes, the college is part of it, but the community is a key too. So we're very, um, uh, we're very keen on, on the needs of our community, the needs of our region. And as you know, occupational therapy is a very, very big need for not just Delaware, but this region. And so next year, we will be starting the first in this area, Master's in Occupational Therapy program, and we're very excited about it. And again, I think it's gonna be an incredible opportunity for those young men and women that are our future, but also our community. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been with Bob Clark, the president of Wesley College. You'll probably see him on the street. If you do, say hello to him. If not, he'll say hello to you. Thanks so Dave, much. Dave, thanks so much. Time. Thank you very much. Hello again. I'm here at the Johnson Hall Health Sciences Building at Wesley College. I'm here with the uh, chair of the nursing department, uh, Dr. Bob Contino, who also serves as president of the Delaware Board of Nursing. Bob, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Good to see you again. It's good to be seen. It's good to see you. It's been it's it's been a while. Uh, tell me about your role here. How long have you have you served here in this beautiful new building? I say new because it's recently been renovated. Yes, it has. Um, we have been in the building since January of 2014. It is the former Freer Federal Building that was gifted by the federal government to Wesley, and Wesley um, totally renovated the building. Matter of fact, right now we're going through the last phases of renovation um, to prepare for the opening of a new master's in occupational therapy program that hopefully will be you know, starting up fairly soon with the admission of students. The nursing program has certainly grown in the past uh, five years or so. T tell me about that. It has grown. Uh, we actually started out in 1969 as an associate degree program. We were the first associate degree program in the state of Delaware. And uh, we transitioned to a baccalaureate degree program and closed our master's degree program in uh, the early 2000s. And we graduated our first baccalaureate class in 2007. Since that time, our program has really shown substantial growth in our numbers. And, uh, you know, we're, we're always trying to look for ways to grow, but growth always has to be measured and done and planned. You just can't admit more students. Tell me about your, your accreditation status. Uh, both our baccalaureate program, our master's program, and our post-master, well, I guess all three programs, our post-master certificate in nursing education is accredited by ACEN, the Accreditation Commission of Education of Nursing. And uh, we last had a visit in 2012 and we are received eight years of accreditation. So our accreditation will run through until spring of 2020. Now your own background is, is interesting. Uh, you've been here for 28 years, I believe? Yes, I, there's been a break in that service. I uh, originally came to the college in uh, 
1985 for my master's degree program, and um, after completing that degree at University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and uh, taught here for four years. And then I had a break in service uh, for two years, academic years. One of those years, I was activated into, I was a Navy reservist and activated into the uh, Navy as a nurse corps officer during Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And, and when I returned from that activation, I came back to Wesley in uh, 1991 and have been here since. So you probably got a lot of experience, hands-on experience uh, doing that uh, operation. Uh, yes, and I've always, my background is critical care nursing, yes. ICU, uh, coronary care. My clinical focus of my uh, graduate program was cardiovascular disease. So I have a lot of ICU experience, and, and that's where I work during um, Operation uh, Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Well, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, tell me about some of the programs here, specialties in the nursing program. Well, we, like we said, we have a generic baccalaureate of science degree in nursing program. It's a four-year program, and, and kind of what's unique about our students, uh, we are not, some schools have what we call a two plus two program, where students come and they take two years of college, general college requirements, general ed or college core, and then in their junior year, they basically are in the nursing program for two years. In some schools, they actually have to apply to the nursing program during their sophomore year to see if they'd be admitted. Um, we didn't develop this program that way. We wanted our students um, to be with us from the freshman year. Our BSN students actually begin their real first nursing course in the spring semester or January of their freshman year. So, and then we add more nursing courses as we go along. Um, but, you know, we just wanted to have the students with us longer so we could model for them um, professionalism, um, what the expectations of being a professional nurse was, mm -hmm. and um, also to uh, mentor them for a longer period of time. So I understand that you are starting a, a new program, a graduate master's in occupational therapy. Yes, that's not part of the nursing program. That actually falls under the Department of Kinesiology. But uh, we're excited about that. We, I was involved with the search for that program for the, um, um, the, the director of that program. That director has been hired. It's Dr. Gibbs. And um, the next position, according to accreditation standards, is the clinical director position. And the college is in the process of interviewing for that position right now. And um, the, also, as part of the process, before we could accept students into the program, we have to have candidacy status from the accrediting body for occupational therapy. An application has been made, and we're waiting to hear um, whether we receive that candidacy status, and um, then we'll begin admitting students. I think the plan is to admit students sometime during the 16 slash 17 academic year, so possibly as early as the fall if we receive that status uh, recognition. Since you moved into this building almost two years ago, uh, what changes have you seen? Major changes. We went from a space of about 6,000 square feet to a space of 30,000 square feet. Um, it's, it's just been amazing. It's given us so much more space for teaching labs. Um, we've gone from one classroom to four modern classrooms with updated technology. We went from one uh, high fidelity mannequin in simulation to we now have four uh, high fidelity mannequins that we use. Um, we now have a separate physical assessment lab that's used for both our undergraduate and graduate program. Um, you know, the program, we also have a uh, home health lab, and it's just a much nicer space. We, we provided a student lounge for students, and uh, we're just so grateful to have this space. That home health lab, tell me about that. What's that about? So much of nursing care is being moved from the hospital setting, inpatient setting, into the community. So we had this additional space, and um, it is actually set up like a living room. Uh, with a bed in it. So it can simulate uh, what it would be like caring for a patient in a living room setting. And that's where a lot of nursing is moving now. With yes. the, uh, we baby boomers are moving uh, into that uh, golden years, hopefully. 
Exactly. And, you know, it's just any experience that we could provide for our students that would better simulate what they're going to see once they leave Wesley is an advantage for them. It's been a great uh, interview talking to you. Is there anything that you'd like to add? We're just excited about the future at Wesley, and uh, we really believe at Wesley College, great things await. What a great close. Thank Thanks, you very much. Good seeing you again. I've been with uh, Dr. Bob Contino, chair of the Wesley College Nursing Department. Well, folks, it's been a great uh, time here at Wesley College. We interviewed the college president, Bob Clark, who updated us on the growth of the institution. I'm uh, standing here in front of Johnston Hall, the new nursing department program that's growing. And we also spoke with uh, head athletic director, Mike Drass. Hope you enjoyed the program. We'll see you next time. Thank you.